All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is a condition you're, you don't want to see your Indian chieftain in, usually. But uh, this was necessary to figure out the best way to um, add a audio amplifier to my bike. Uh, I needed to uncover everything and figure out where I could get power from, where I could mount it, even though it's a marine grade amp. I needed to try to keep it as dry as possible and out of sight. Did not want to mount up my saddlebags. So the first thing I did was took off my the front of my fairing and I uh, thought I would take some notes for posterity and in case anybody else found any of this disassembly information useful. Um, the outer fairing at first glance looks pretty easy and actually it's not bad. It just takes a little time you have um i went ahead and took off the headlight first that is the two bolts over the chrome surround and then the three bolts that actually hold the headlight on uh it turns out that they are required because part of that does go to the uh inner fairing so you do need to take that off uh that was that's 10 millimeter bolts and the Surrounds are of course the four millimeter Allens. You also need your four millimeter Allens uh, on the inside here. There are two that are in plain sight on each side, and you will need to pop your speaker cover. There is an additional to the right, and you see I have my Polk Audio 521s in here, um, which is why I'm doing this. Ever since I put the 521s on there, the factory amp just doesn't do it. Uh, looking at the power, I traced the main harness that, that's coming through a uh, nice sleeve here. And no matter which wire I'm looking at, there's nothing really big enough here to uh, carry the power for the amp. And I could see no real good ground that they're using up in here anywhere. So I was going to have to run back to the battery. Um, so I removed the tank after of course removing the seat and here you have your main conduit that houses all the factory wiring. Uh, normally this is covered by a plastic guard I'll just kind of laid on there. It actually snaps in place. The first time I did this, there were actually zip ties on it, I believe. Um, but that keeps everything nice and tidy. I'm going to run it through there. The uh, tank is actually pretty easy to remove. There are a couple of annoyances. Uh, the first thing you want to do is up under the rear of the tank, there will be this hose you want to pop loose uh, on these hinges. The tank actually comes to the rear here. Undo the top bolts. Um, for some reason, I always want to undo the bottom bolts, thinking this lever is going to raise up, but that is not the easy way. Do, just undo the, there's two bolts on the, each side. Undo those, and your chrome cover on the top of the tank. That's four millimeter Allens again, one on the rear. The front one is a pain. They designed this with a trick. Uh, do yourself a favor. Do not take that bolt all the way out. Undo it just slightly because you see the way this is made. There's a, a cutout. So what you do is you take that rear bolt out. You loosen the front and there will be a washer on it. And then you just rock the chrome piece forward until it reaches that cutout. And then the chrome just lifts off the bolt. The bolt can re can remain in that um, slot here that kind of hard to show you right now. But when this is on the bike, look 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 at this area right there behind your neck. It's hard to get to, so just loosen it. Um, and when you put this back on, make sure the bolt's already started. And one thing I did, I took that washer and glued it to the head of the bolt. So I can just start it and then just slide this back on 
and without fighting the washer to get it where it needs to be. You know, just glued the washer to the to the underside of the bolt, to the head of it, and set the bolt upside down while the glue dries. A little trick that saves you some aggravation. Um, the top connects, you have a fuel line that you just press, it's a quick disconnect. Um, you have a wiring connector here for the fuel pump and sending unit. You have, on my case, three. You may only have two. Uh, I have heated grips, so there's another switch. But these have little tabs that you just push in slightly and they just pop loose for your chrome switches. And, uh, See if I can show you here. It's actually on the front of the tank. You'll need to pop that loose. And those just pop off there. But it's pretty easy. No big deal. Just take your time. Don't do like I did with a previous bike and accidentally drop the tank. That's not good. Just be careful. Um, of course, I got my computer tied up out of the way. So I don't do the infamous uh, computer to positive arc and blow my computer up. Try to keep an eye on that. All right, let me back to the fairing. You can see I've uh, put the fairing back up on the outside. What I was doing is I was trying to find a place that I could put the amp, uh, and it was clear. The way it is right now, it's seating good. It's going to work. Um, so let me get back to this fairing which is where it all starts and kind of the tricky part. I already showed you the main bolts. The four millimeter again up here. Four, the four millimeter on the, on the speaker housing. But you also got, uh, I believe it's four more four millimeter down behind the windshield. And it's a pain in the butt to get to with a, with a socket that's of any size because there's not very much clearance there. So what I did is I extended my windshield mechanism all the way up to get a little bit more clearance. And then I found that I was kind of scrubbing against the windshield. I don't like that, so I just took the windshield off and get it out of the way. So I got those loose. And she comes right off. I mean, she's a little sticky from the uh, sealant, but not bad. You just rocked it a little bit, and she popped right off. So you need to just disconnect your blinkers and your uh, highway lights. And there's the amp. Now let me set this down right quick and we'll talk about a little something here inside this fairing and you can pretty much tell on these Indian fairings just by looking at it without even taking it apart they're not very water sealed you got water coming down through the uh, windshield mechanism that runs down through here behind the headlight housing all this under area is open even if I could find a spot there I didn't like that so I'm looking at the spots, the two primary spots on this fairing where things stay dry and they're actually sizable spots is your compartments where your speakers are at. One of them, at least on the 14 Chieftain, um, you had this little pouch that come up in here with an access port. And you can see where it seals around the edge looks pretty good they got this brace bar up in there and this one's actually thicker on this side looking at the other side there was a brace bar too and I think it's just there for reinforcement it didn't really seem like it was absolutely necessary one 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolt and it was out so because I could not get it to clear with that break, breaker bar in or brace bar in there so I just took it out now this is a Clarion 4 channel 300 watt XC2410. Um, has high level inputs, which is going to make this easier. I just run my factory speaker wires into the inputs on the amp and then amp back to the speakers. Um, if I bridge it, if I figure out how to do that, then I can get up to 150 watts per speaker. Um, and that is true RMS. And according to um, what I've read online, these amps actually perform higher than their rating, which is really good. Uh, got really good reviews. It's just a matter of finding a place to mount it. 
So there is a couple of things I'm going to have to figure out here. Um, the power lead has a fuse block pretty close to the amp. Um, if this fuse ever blows, I'm not going to be able to get to this without dis disassembling the fairing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that out, direct wire it, and then move that fuse link further down the link where I can actually get to it pretty easily. So I'll keep the fuse link, I'm just going to move it. Um, and then I'll run the heavy gauge um, through the same seal openings that they're already using. Uh, we need at least a 10, maybe an 8, but at least a 10 gauge wiring for this amp is what's recommended. And I'm going to follow the main harness. I don't believe I can push it up through the, the sleeve, but what I can do, uh, I have some um, cable loom I'm going to hide it in. And then once it gets up under the tank, it will be in this conduit back to the battery. And uh, I'm going to work on this, and we'll come back and see how it turns out. All right, I'm trying again on this video. I had to cut out the uh, end of the last one since YouTube blocked it. Apparently, they can't tell the difference between CD playing music and music coming uh, from a motorcycle stereo I mean it didn't sound that good come on but let's get back to uh, the wrap up on this amp I wanted to show you where the wiring is running through this conduit here that's really the only uh, part that's left visible um, and then of course it runs through the conduit up to the battery compartment and I left the fuse um, behind the side cover everything got sealed up pretty good no problems getting it back together um, I'm gonna try to do another demonstration of the audio but in order to keep from uh, tripping YouTube's BS sensors again I'm going to try to just do short clips for a few seconds the audio uh, will be set at 20 and uh, I'm going to set the audio at 20 and I'll go ahead and fire the bike up. This bike has had um, stage uh, 1 slip-ons and uh, stage 2 cams, Freedom True Duels installed recently. So that just made my volume issue even worse with the 521s so we'll see how it sounds with the bike running idling Clips can be before it catches it. Anyway, that's at 20, and the volume can go up from there all the way up to 30. If you notice the 
boost all the way up.